Hello and welcome back to what is going to be the final season of the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode as we kick off season 15 of the Lincoln Loco 3. So this is going to be the final season we're doing with the Lincoln Loco 3. It kind of makes sense, right? Uh, season 15 is a nice round number to finish on. We've won La Liga and we've got one final chance to try and win a Champions League before we close the chapter on the Lincoln Loco 3 and open a new chapter somewhere else. Also for me as a creator, and I guess for you guys as viewers as well, 15 seasons is a lot of time to commit to something. I'm getting to the point now where I'm kind of getting a little fed up with the save, if you know what I mean. Like, I've been doing it for so long now, and I've kind of done what we needed to do, and it's getting a little bit, ah, oh, let's just try and move on to something else. And I think you guys probably are experiencing that as well. Viewing numbers are also starting to go on the decline a little bit as well. So it kind of just makes sense that this is the final season of the Lincoln Loco 3. We're going to give it everything we can to win a Champions League, and if we don't, we never will. So given that it is the final season, uh, make sure you do smash that like button for me, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you could download the One Football app for absolutely free from the top line of the description, I would massively appreciate that. It is the best footballing app out there for all of the football news, live scores, and updates sent straight through to your phone when you follow your favorite team to get push notifications sent straight through for all of the match updates that matter to you. You can download it for free and it massively helps me out. So go to the top line of the description to get the app. So normally we start things off with a transfer special. However, we're not doing a transfer special this season because, well, there wasn't really any transfers to make. We've made two transfers, one of them you already know about. Oscar Prasado, the young Colombian winger coming in from uh, Deportivo Cali. He's here. He looks absolutely amazing. And he is going to be playing left wing for us all season. The physicals are through the roof. The technicals are pretty decent as well. And his mentals are also fantastic. And remember, he's 20 years old. If we had another five years in this save, I'd expect him to go on to be one of the best players in the world. That's how good I think he could be. So very happy that he is here at the club. We also need to strengthen the centre of midfield after losing using Catania last January and to be fair 20 or 30 minutes on finding a centre mid was not going to be a very entertaining transfer special so I've just done it off camera Ivan Chan is the guy coming in from RB Leipzig for 38 million pounds I'll be honest we could have maybe done a little bit better than him physicals and mentals are absolutely incredible right they're really solid the technicals maybe let him down a little bit but for what was available at the right price for us this guy looked pretty decent. 88 caps for Mexico at the age of 25 as well. So he's clearly a very experienced world-class player. Can play centre mid, can play CDM, can play left wing, can play right back apparently, weirdly. So very versatile too, which is fantastic. So he will come in to be a box-to-box -box midfielder or a ball-winning midfielder. We don't really have any of those in the squad other than Quebec, who is more of the playmaker type anyway. So it's good to have a proper box-to-boxer -box or ball winner in there to make sure we have someone solid if we need those positions. So that's literally everything that happened over summer, like nothing, basically nothing happened over summer. It was very boring and uh, no one left the club. We had no big bids coming for anyone. No one really wanted our players, which was actually quite a nice change, if I'm honest with you. There was like one or two like bids for Rask, I think, and Varel, but they were very quickly rejected and then no one ever came back in for them, stuff like that. So really nothing happened over summer, so it was not particularly interesting. What is interesting though, is the start of our season. I don't understand how it happens every single year. But we have a double header with Real Madrid and Barcelona again, but this time it's to start off the season. Last year we didn't actually have a Barcelona Real double header, but the season before that we definitely had a Barcelona Real Madrid double header, as you can see here with the cup game wedged in between actually, so that's a little bit unfair. But at the end of the season, for example, the double header was there. We've had double headers the season before that, I believe, as well. And that was double Barcelona, yeah, double Barcelona and then a Real Madrid game. Like, we always seem to have both of them at the same time. So I don't know if that's a bug or we just get very unlucky when it comes to fixture generation, but we have a very, very tough start to the season today. Thing is, though, given that we did win the league last season and we are playing at home to Real Madrid today, I back us. I really back us today to do well. So we're going to go for the 4-2-2-2 attacking formation with Krenta starting in goal and a backline of Varel, Weber, Rubens and Rask. New boy Chan comes into play as that box-to-box -box midfielder with Nowak alongside him as the deep line playmaker. Presedo comes in on the left wing, Paolo Turner on the right wing with Sione and Morelles up 
front. We've got loads of players available to us this season. No one's going out on loan. I want to give plenty of game time to people like one Pitbull app. I want to give Phoenix uh, Herdsman plenty of game time as well. I want to give Tyson Brown plenty of game time. Jeremy Finley, all these young players that are coming through, I want to give them game time. And they will get game time this season because this year, although we've got a very tricky start to the league season and we're going to put out some full strength lineups for the games against Real Madrid and Barcelona, the Champions League has to be our priority this season. So we're going to be doing lots of rotation and lots of resting. So hopefully every on the first team is going to get at least like 10 games this season in the league or something like that to rotate everything around nicely. We might not do as well in the league as a consequence of that, but it's going to give us the best possible chance to win the Champions League. As Real Madrid looks to come forward and Gar shoots and Krenzer, I think, palms that into the back of his net. He got a hand to it and then helped it on its way in the back of the net. Not a great goal to concede there, unfortunately. Not a great start to the season for Krenzer as well as Ungar. Yeah, he does get past the defender well. And Krenzer, yeah, he does save it. He does, like, block it. It just slows it down as opposed to deflects it wide. Okay, so not, not ideal for us there, I would say. But we can easily get back in this game. I'm absolutely sure of it. We played very well over pre-season, beating teams. I think we beat Juventus over pre-season. Uh, we beat Leeds United over pre-season. We beat some really decent sides. So... I'm confident that we can be... be <sighs> He's done it again. Krenter, two goals now we've conceded that Krenter just palmed into the back of a net. Let's watch this back again then. The ball into Ungar, who uh, doesn't really shoot from a... <sighs> it's Krenter again. He pushed it into the back of his net. Well, maybe we should have signed a new keeper over summer instead because Krenter has had an absolutely woeful start to this one. And now here can Real... Right, well... 22 minutes into the new season, it's not going well. Thing is, though, we were very, very lucky against Real Madrid last season. We, oh, for God's sake, you hate to see it. We beat them once and we drew with them once, only having five shots on target and scoring four goals from that. So uh, we got very lucky last season against Real Madrid. Clearly, the luck has turned around. This is not a great... Can I just stop the recording now? This is embarrassing. No, not, not a fifth. Surely not a fifth. Good clearance out from the back there as Paolo Turner looks to come forward, uses his pace into Morelles. Morelles scores. Okay, there's one goal back at least. But Real could easily make it five right now, which is uh, a little concerning as Rask... Oh, you hate to see it. I think he's just given away a penalty. What's the decision going to be then? Referee, as he's looked at his monitor, the decision is no penalty. Oh, you'll love to see it. Okay, half time. Mm, the less said about the first half, uh, the better. I'm going to throw the water bottle. Far from pleased. That was a terrible first half. I don't think we play this formation against Barcelona now. Although we did beat Barcelona last season... I think twice actually using this formation. Maybe one time using this formation and one time using the five at the back formation. But we are away from home to Barcelona, so we'll go five at the back against them. But Morelis does pull a goal back inside the first couple of minutes of the first of the second half, I should say. So that's a good start at least for us. Okay, we've been very unlucky at the back, but once again we've had three shots on target today, and two of them have gone in the back of a net. So clearly our strikers are absolutely on top form when we play against Real Madrid, or maybe their keeper is just rubbish. But come on, Morelis, get a hat-trick. Make this game interesting. Oh, my goodness gracious me, he has done two hat-tricks in this game. One for Morelis, one for Ungar for Real Madrid. Let's turn this around, boys. Throwing the bottle clearly works very well for them out there as another attack for us. Chan, right, that's certainly a penalty. That has to be a penalty. If that's not a penalty, I don't know what one is. Checking the VAR, come on, give us a penalty. Bring it back to 4-4. You look, we were 4-0 down in this game. We've brought it back to 4-4. I'm glad I didn't stop recording. This is fantastic. You love to see it. I was quite presumptive there. Assumed we were going to score the goal before it actually went in the back of the net. But we did score the goal. And can we get a fifth? Presedo, our new winger, who's not really done much in today's game, gets into the area, shoots, can't score. Oh, Morelos can't score. Imagine if we win this one now. This is incredible. 4-0 down. It's back to 4-4. Four, four. What, what a game. What a game, I must say. It's Varel now into Chan. Chan into Nowak. Nowak is tackled. Oh, you hate to see it. Here come Real Madrid. If only Krenter could actually save a shot. Okay, that might be a penalty, that one. Oh, no. If it is a penalty, it's probably a red card for Rubens as well. He's already on a yellow, which is a little worrying, right? Uh, penalty awarded. Right, please don't send Rubens off. They haven't sent Rubens off. Krenter, make up for your mistakes. Make up for your mistakes now. 
He has done. You love to see it. What a game this one is. Okay, it's somehow still four all out there. Uh, it was a corner for Real Madrid, which is put way over the bar. Ugh, Krenter, he's had such a weird game. He started off terribly and has now saved a penalty. It's 4-4 after being 4-0 down. There's 10 minutes to go. We've now got to throw in. If we score now, we're going mental. We're going mental if we score right now as... Paolo Turner into Nowak. Nowak is brought down. Gets it back on the ball, though. Into Paolo Turner. Paolo Turner into Sione. Sione scores! 4-0 <laughs> down. And we've come back and we're 5-4 up now. Incredible stuff out there. I really thought there might have been a foul on the edge of the area, like once or twice here, to be fair, as players kept falling over and things like that. But Sione slots it in at the near post. Real Madrid. 4-0 up. And you messed it up. I can't believe it. What a game this has turned out to be. I mean, the new boys, Chan and Presedo, don't know what's happened to them. They're on 6.3 and 6.6s right now, respectively. And like They don't know what's going on in this game. But our boys are absolutely loving it. I'll tell you what I forgot to do, though. No, that's not a penalty. That's... No, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Three... Four penalty shouts in the game, right? Four penalty shouts in the game. Three for Real Madrid. One given, one not given. Is it going to be two given? No penalty. Come on, you love to see it. Wow. What a way to start off the season. As, I mean, Crento is very risky there, Planet. <laughs> when we had two defenders, two attackers on the defender. We've now got 50 seconds to hold on in this game. As Varel gets forward. Varel into Sione. Sione... Six. Six four. What a game. So, 32 minutes into this game, we were 4 nil down. Come full time, we've won 6-4. Eight shots on target, six of them in the back of the net. Incredible. Oh, this sort of game that makes you want to play the Lincoln Loco forever. You know, every now and again you get a good game like this and it's like, I want to play the Lincoln Loco forever, but we have to end it at some point. And this season is the point to end it, I think. that It makes the most sense to me. But what a way to start off the season. I am so appalled but very impressed by our players at the same time okay a week off then until the Barcelona game what do we what do we do Barcelona last season were terrible right they were not very good they finished fifth and they were nearly 20 points adrift of fourth place so they played terribly last season right we beat them twice last season if we can find it uh Real but not Real Madrid Barcelona where are you we beat them 1-0 away from home playing the 4-2-4 and then we beat them at home, was it right at the start of the season? When did we play them? I can only see one, oh, they're right here. Four nil at home using five at the back. So, I tell you what, let's just do it again. The 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. Uros Krenter, keeper of the week. Um, I can't say I agree with that. Yes, he saved a penalty, but he also palmed two goals in the back of the net and then just let a corner go in as well. So he was at fault for three goals. In it. I, I don't understand this sometimes. So for the Barcelona game, I think we're going to bring Tyson Brown onto the pitch instead of Nowak. Give him a run out in the centre of midfield. Also, I might bring Jeremy Finley on. See how he does as that complete forward instead of Siona to start off with at least. I want to give him some game time this season. He had a very good loan spell last season in the second division uh, playing for Alaves. Um, got nine goals, 36 games, which is pretty decent going for an Alaves side who I think just missed out. They just missed out on promotion by finishing uh, sixth last season. They got playoffs, but lost in the playoffs. But other than that, don't want to make too many changes. So we'll leave it at that. Submit the team and go to the game. So kickoff is upon us here today. You love to see it. And we've got a highlight right at the start of the game as we play in our lovely Belarusian coloured inspired kits, obviously for Andre Shitigel. As Morales has been put forward and Morales, oh, puts it over the bar, but that was a fantastic chance for us early on. I can't really say what's happened to Barcelona and why they were so terrible last season. And for the past few years, haven't really been at the top of their game. I don't know if it's financial stuff programmed into the game or they just get very unlucky with youth development or I don't know what it is because normally they are always right at the very top but in this save they have been on the decline like for them not to get a top four finish is absolutely mental absolutely mental as Krenter this time 
works out how to tip a ball around the post rather than into the back of the net. Unfortunately though, everything right now, as it was in the first game actually, is all Barcelona, unfortunately. So we need to try and get ourselves on top of this game as that was very poor defending from us to just let their man go into the area. I'll tell you what, it is Barcelona still. They are still fantastic. I would take a draw here away from home, particularly playing a very attacking formation. Um, obviously not being very strong defensively, but Paolo Turner races forward, is left behind and can't finish. Paolo. Varel though with a chance into the middle from a free kick. It's cleared and it's Barcelona now on the counter-attack. Great challenge from Chan though. That's what we've signed him to do. He's a great tackler of the ball and he's done a fantastic job there as he gets the ball into Varel. Back to Chan, into Jeremy Finley. Tyson Brown to Paolo Turner. Paolo Turner loses possession and here comes the Barcelona counter-attack with pace. Rubens, no, no, not a penalty. I mean, their man didn't go down. Rubens literally stops the ball. He just steals the ball right off them. If that's a penalty, there's no, there's no justice in this world. Oh, I can't believe that. No way is that a penalty. Come on, Crenzi, you saved one last game. He can't save one this game. I think of all the penalty decisions in this in this game or episode so far, I should say. That was the one that I was most certain wasn't a penalty. And of course, it's the one penalty that actually gets put in the back of the net. As Paolo Turner into the middle. Oh, we've not quite scored the goal, unfortunately. But as we head into half time, the penalty is the only thing separating the two sides right now, which is it's not the worst thing in the world. Obviously, though, as we saw in the Barcelona game, we are a second half team. So we're going to come alive in the second half right now as we don't do anything from the corner, unfortunately. Barcelona clear out from the back though. Oh, they get it past our man and they look to get the ball into the middle. They run past our slide tackle and if that went in the back of the net, I would have cried. Rubens though, with a chance to come forward. A great ball forward towards Morelos, not quite reaching the intended target though, unfortunately. Yeah, Rubens got a very good pass on him like that. Unfortunately, the Barcelona players have a better pass and I think Krenta has palmed that into the back of a net. Five goals he's conceded in today's episode. Six goals, actually, I should say. Three of them, he's palmed that into the back of a net. What is wrong with his wrists? Okay, really not very happy with Krenzer. And uh, for a second game in a row, Presedo just not quite gelling with the players out there. So Terziev on you come. Finley off for Sione. And let's bring her back on for Chan. Obviously, it will take a little while for these new players to get bedded into the team, but hopefully they do it quickly this season because we want to make sure we're right up there in the league this season as well. And we need them to perform for the Champions League, most importantly, as well as Tyson Brown into Sione. Sione to Paolo Turner. Paolo Turner into the area. Can he get a cross into Tay? Ooh, ooh, that was a lovely goal somehow. I'm not quite sure Tyson Brown meant to pass it. I think he tried to shoot, but it looked like a lovely pass to Morelles, who then tried to shoot. I mean, it just fell to Sione nicely. I was very confused as to what was happening there, but Paolo Turner back to Tyson Brown. I think it was a shot. Then Morelis gets in the way. I thought he just like nodded it back towards Sione or something like that. But no, it's it finds its way in the back of the net somehow. I can't really explain that goal. But we need to demand more for the final 20 minutes or so of this game. Come on, boys. Let's get ourselves back in this one. We want the win. We've had more shots than Barcelona today. So we have been, I would say, the better team. If the referee wasn't biased and given a penalty and Krenzig could actually have strong wrists and actually deflect a shot wide, we'd be winning this game. I think really what's happened here is the Spanish FA, much like long ago when they didn't like us, they still don't like us and they are trying to do everything possible to make sure we don't win another La Liga title or something like that as Terzi of shots hits the post. Very unlucky. There is still 10 minutes to go in this game though. Still plenty of time for us to score a goal or for Barcelona to get another one. Krenta! He can't... Right. I think Krenta's got to be out and Arthur Ackland or Suave the Ball have got to be in. Krenta has not done anything good in today's episode so far. Apart from save a penalty I suppose. That was pretty decent right but... He's all over the place. I don't feel like I trust him all of a sudden. I don't know what's happened to him over summer, but he's not really had a great time as Varel's shot is absolutely terrible. And despite our best efforts, despite us playing better in this game than we did against Real Madrid, like we've had so many more shots, more possession, we've just been the better team in general. Of course, 
this is the one we lose. So a very entertaining start to the new season. That Real Madrid game is one of the best we've ever played. And then we play better in this game. And then, lot weird, isn't it? Before we finish up today's episode, though, the Champions League group stage draw comes up in a couple of days' time. So I want to make sure we do that before we finish off today's episode. Oh, Chelsea won Axel Carter, who's now branded as a wonder kid, which is very exciting, uh, for 10 million. You can't have him. He's not going anywhere. It's great to see so many of our young players having developed into wonder kids. Like the youth academy we have here is incredible and there will be a video on it coming out next week or so but right now the most important thing is the champions league group stage where we are a first seeded team because we won la liga last season so let's draw all the first seeded teams get them out of the way so we are in group h as you can see uh, other first seeds are atletico uh, wolverhampton wanderers tottenham liverpool juventus psg and Bayern Munich. So, second seeded teams, we can't have Valencia or Real Madrid because, of course, they are Spanish. So, we might have United, City, Inter, Borussia Dortmund, Porto, or Munchen Gladbach. I'd quite like Porto, if I'm honest with you. Let's see who we are going to get. It's going to be Borussia Dortmund, which actually is one of the kinder teams out of that draw, I think. I think in Germany, Borussia Dortmund, let's have a quick look right in the Bundesliga. Uh, Bayern keep winning it, but Borussia Mönchengladbach are like the second best team there now. So Dortmunds, I'd prefer them to Mönchengladbach. In terms of teams who are third seeded, we've got Napoli, Lazio, Lille, Monaco, Brighton, uh, Dinamo Kiev, Hertha Berlin and Rangers. Anyone other than Lille will be fantastic. Um, as long as you don't get Lille again and get knocked out to them again, it will be fantastic. So let's see who we're going to get. We get Napoli. I think we've played before in the group stage of the Champions League and beat them. So I'm quite comfortable with that one. And then fourth seeded teams, there is Club Bruges, Dinamo, Olympiacos, Young Boys, Copenhagen, Benfica, Zenit and Shakhtar. If I'm honest with you, I would quite like Young Boys for the sort of old rivalry that we had with them back in the hop to the top days. So let's draw these teams and see who we get. It's not Young Boys. It's going to be Zenit St. Petersburg. All right. A pretty decent group. We had, actually, we had Zenit and Napoli in our last Champions League group. So nothing's changed, which is actually kind of sad. So next episode, we'll come back, I reckon, for the Borussia Dortmund and maybe Granada game. We did Elche like a few episodes ago, right? So let's do Granada and let's do Borussia Dortmund next time out. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.